Over the ages, the music of a flute floating through the air has touched the human spirit, bringing a sense of peace and silence to our hearts. We have danced and sung with flutes. We have lifted the dead to the sky and courted the ones we love. With the flute, we have asked for rain and for fertility. We have spoken to the birds and to the forest, and we have opened a path to some mystical world beyond our minds. Flutes are an instrument that have arisen in nearly every culture throughout the world. In fact, the oldest playable instrument found to date is a flute dating to around 35,000 BC. On the American continents, flutes dating to 4,200 BC have been found along the west coast of Peru in South America. In 1931, five Anasazi flutes dating between 620 and 630 AD were found in the Broken Flute Cave of the Prayer Rock District in northern Arizona. Predating these artifacts are three panpipe flutes that were uncovered at Hopewell Mound in Mount Vernon, Ohio. These artifacts date between 1 AD and 500 AD and are the oldest known flutes on the North American continent. The presence of these South American flutes and the rock paintings of flute players that date to the same time period suggest that flutes from South and Central America have been making their way north for some time. The technologies and techniques brought by the earliest trade routes that flowed from the South were surely integrated and expanded upon in Northern Native American culture. In 1541, in the area that is now New Mexico, native flutes were mentioned in a letter written by a member of Coronado's expedition. It read, The Indians hold their dances and songs with the aid of some flutes which have holes for their fingers. They make many tunes, singing jointly with those who play. Those who sing clap their hands in the same manner as we do. I saw one of the Indians who accompanied the Negro Esteban and who was captive there, since they had taught him how to do it there. Others were singing, as I said, although not very harmoniously. They say that five or six get together to play and that the flutes are of different sizes. Hammond and Ray. In 1826, Thomas L. McKenney, somewhat poetically, wrote about the Ottawa of the Ojibwe people while at Drummond's Island, Minnesota. It rose that chanted mournful strain like some lone spirit o'er the plain. "'Twas musical but sadly sweet, such as when wind and harp strings meet and take long, unmeasured tone." Double flutes, also known as a drone flute, have been found throughout the world and are still quite common in the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and the Far East. In North America, double flutes have been reported among the tribes in the Southeast, and double and triple whistles were commonly found among the tribes in the Northwest. These flutes are essentially two flutes bound together and played at the same time. Normally, one side has fingering holes and the other, known as the drone, does not. The role of the drone is to play a constant note while a melody is played on the other flute. Most modern drone flutes have two separate holes in the mouthpiece, one for each flute. This allows the flute to be played with or without the accompanying drone. These flutes have a rich, full sound that gives the impression of two people playing at once.
Today, the Native American flutes of North America look like the flutes you've been seeing here. This design, known today as a plains flute, is thought to have originated with the Papago, Anasazi, and or the Hopi people around 300 years ago. However, the exact origin is unknown, as the oldest artifact of this type of flute is about 180 years old, dating to around 1832. The predecessors to the flutes we know today are thought to have been two-chambered flutes played by manipulating the holes with one hand while using a finger from the other hand to bridge the gap between the two chambers and produce the sound. The Apache people are thought to have later modified this design by replacing the sound-producing finger with a wood block or leather tie. This allowed them to keep one hand free while riding a horse. This modification also made the flute a much easier instrument to play, one of the most beneficial features to this day. The Native American flute is quite possibly the easiest flute to learn and play. Its simple design and the ease at which a sound is made makes the flute accessible to anyone, musicians and non-musicians alike. Just cover the five holes, blow softly, and the flute does the rest, producing a warm, rich, relaxing sound. With the ease at which people learn to play the Native American flute and the soft, meditative sound it produces, it's no wonder that the flute has enjoyed a continued increase in popularity since the early 1980s. This flute is simple to learn and play, yet it offers a complexity of subtleties that allows even the most experienced players to continually grow in new and creative ways. We all want to be a part of the joy and creativity that making music offers, and the Native American flute provides this opportunity for all of us.